It is a very exciting new tool day here in the shop. And I wanted to go ahead and share this with you guys because I want to share my excitement over this. You can see on the box there where it's from, the Sterrett Weber Gauge Division. This is in no way any type of brag or boast. This is me sharing my excitement about continuing to build out my collection of precision tools. That is something that I absolutely love and uh, love owning them. I love acquiring them uh, any chance that I get. And I have a set of gauge blocks. It's an old set that I bought secondhand several years back. It's a Dewall set, you know, made by Dewall. And, uh, and they still work fine. When I bought them, they did have some kind of some corrosion on them, surface rust. And, uh, you know, like I said, I got them secondhand, and that's what I've been using for years now. But uh, I'm really proud to, to now own a new set, brand new set that nobody else has used that uh, they haven't taken care of, a brand new set that are mine, that, that it's going to be mine now, and I know they'll be well taken care of. So the, uh, the Weber Gauge Division is uh, part of Sterrett. They're up near the uh, Cleveland, Ohio area, uh, actually West Lake, Ohio. That's where the Weber Gauge Division is. And let me show you what we got here. So new set of gauge blocks, and I was real curious as to how these guys get handled you know, in shipment. So they've got this foam in here. And then this is the new set of gauge blocks here. So they've got a hard case. And what they have done is they've uh, wrapped it in the plastic where they put a plastic band on there to hold the case together, keep it from opening. And then they've got it vacuum sealed with that bag there, prevent any moisture getting in there whatsoever. And then it's well protected with this foam that they lined the box with there. So very cool. This is the 81 piece gauge block set. I love how they've got the, on the uh, certificate of calibration, they've actually got um, my name on there. Very cool. This is gonna be a wonderful set of gauge blocks to have. So looking forward to uh, getting these guys opened up and having a fresh brand new set of gauge blocks that I know is right that we can use on our, on our granite surface plate and for all kinds of different jobs and inspection work. All right, so there is our new set of uh, Sterrett gauge blocks there. Really excited to finally have some of these guys in here in the shop. Uh, we know that they're all brand new. They're all within tolerance, that we've got our certificate of calibration on every block that was made and put in this set right here. And I do want to point out that this is the grade B. Okay, so you have, you have a grade B, you have a grade A, you have ceramic. You have different levels of, um, of blocks that you can get. And, uh, and I know most of you guys know that out there, but for those that aren't aware, the, uh, the grade B is your more economical, more affordable priced of gauge blocks that you can get. And these are great for shops like mine. Somebody like me that I don't necessarily use these guys every single day for really high end, high quality uh, setups or inspections all the time. This is a general use set. So when we need to go into the granite surface plate, or go onto the granite service plate and we need to make a stack up to maybe uh, maybe we want to use this one inch and we want to set our dial indicator to a zero on this one inch. Uh, use it for a comparative measurement like that or stack up work or maybe even whenever we're doing some machining, I'll pull these guys out and we'll, we'll give them a try, use them whenever we're uh, checking our keyway widths and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of different uses um, that you can use these gauge blocks for and I'm real happy to have them. But I did want to point out there's a difference there in grade, and so this is more of an affordable economy line of uh, gauge blocks, and I'm real happy to have them here. 
So I'll take my old set back to the home shop. That, that way I'll have a set there whenever I need them. And now we've got our new ones here and we'll put them in the Gerstner and they're gonna be um, uh, well cared for and protected here in the shop. And I look forward to being able to use these guys over there on the, on the granite plate. They do come with um, quite a bit of shipping oil on these guys to, uh, to protect them, keep any kind of moisture off of them. So I think we'll just, we'll just leave them like you see them right there. We've got the volatile paper that they use to uh, help protect them as well. So I think I'm just gonna leave the set just like that. But really excited to, to have a new set of gauge blocks here in the shop, guys. And I just wanted to uh, share that with you. We got you in here on our Starrett granite surface plate, and I wanted to give you at least one example of how we can use our new gauge blocks there. Now the gauge blocks have many uses in the shop. And one of the things to remember is that sometimes a gauge block set is considered a master set and it's not to be used out inside the shop in any way. A master set typically lives in the inspection room in a climate controlled environment, and it's only used as the master reference size that you're, that you're setting your comparative tools to, like a dial indicator or other, other tools like that. Now, in my case, I use my gauge blocks for everything. You know, so we can use them for calibrations, we can use them for stack up work, and occasionally I might use them in the shop. But it's generally good practice to have a good master set like this here that you just keep in your inspection room or at the granite plate and you only use it for inspection type work. And you have another set that stays in your toolbox out at the machine. You know, a lot of guys are having to use these on the machines for measurements, which is something I do. Now, I've always used my older secondhand set for things like that. So that's just one of the things that I wanted to point out there. That, um, that it's important to keep in mind. So it's also important to take care of it and use it right there too. Just like our uh, granite service plate here, anytime you're working on the granite plate, always be very gentle. Every single time you take something, you take a part, a tool, whatever, and you, and you set it down, you gotta make sure it's clean first. Set it gently. Do not drop it, don't set it hard. Set it gentle so that you prevent putting any chips in the top of this surface plate, okay? So what we're gonna use as an example for this right here is I want to pretend that maybe we're machining these one, two, three blocks right here. Maybe we're machining them and we wanna check them on size, right? One, two, three blocks are a very precision tool that is used on the granite plate and for many other uses as well, just like a, uh, a gauge block. Now these are, these are the best quality one, two, three blocks that I have. These are also secondhand, uh, most likely shop made by a tool maker somewhere down the line. I ended up with them and then my friend Lance actually surface ground these for me so that we would have a, a good absolute uh, set of blocks there. He actually match ground them on his uh, surface grinder. So Lance, we're gonna be using your blocks here as an example. So saying that since Lance ground these, these are no longer uh, one, two, three blocks. They're slightly undersized because he took a little bit of material off of them. So to begin with, what I did is I took a micrometer here and I simply measured it with the micrometer to get a size on what this block is. And this is the size that we're going to use as our size for our example, which is 1.9971. Okay, so we're going to use that size that I might this is the size that we want our parts to land on right there, all right? I also give myself a tolerance because you always have to have a tolerance to work in. Usually with this kind of stuff here, you have about a one or two tenths tolerance. So I just put plus one plus minus as an example if you're using this work for inspection. If you're, if you're measuring the parts that you're, that you're building and machining and grinding to see if they fall within a tolerance to the size that you're trying to land on there. All right, so this is our stack up. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and show you, this is our stack up. We got the one, the 750, the 147, and then the 1.001. 0, 1. What we'll begin with, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these apart here and talk about ringing them together, all right? When you use gauge blocks, you have to ring them together. So first thing you do, make sure they're clean. Mine still have a lot of oil on them, so I'm taking a clean uh, low lint rag here and just kind of wiping them off. And you kind of take them and just wipe them on that part of your, 
your hand or your, your wrist there, okay? So we'll take the 750 and the one. Start them at 90 degrees apart. Just put a little pressure on them and then gently twist them together. And once you twist them together, they are stuck. They're not gonna come apart. It almost feels like they're magnetic, but they're not. They're so precisely honed, they're so flat that they stick together, all right? So then we'll do the same thing with our next one. This is our point one four seven. I've already cleaned these once, so I'm just making sure that I get any dust that's landed on them off. We're gonna take it and I'm gonna twist it together just like that. And you can feel them. It gets, it, you have a little bit more resistance once you get them twisted on her. You can see they're not coming off. All right, we'll do the same thing with our 0 .1001 gauge block here. I'm gonna wipe it off there. We're gonna wipe that one there. Stick them together. I just have to hold this so that I can get it, get it together there, right? All right, twisted it together, and there is our stack up right there, our gauge block stack up, and you can see it's not coming apart there. It's one of the cool things about gauge blocks is how they ring and stick together. So this right here, this stack up, make sure the plate's clean. This stack up, according to our gauge block set, because this is what we're referencing right here, equals 1.997. So again, that's the block set I ended up using that equals 1.9971, okay? We can take our mic. You can also use this and you can mic it if you want to. And you can check it, you know, you can use your, you can calibrate your own measuring tools doing this kind of stuff. And we mic that right there. And our, our mics are on, so I'm at uh, 1.997 and one tenth on there, okay? So this is good to go. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is use our our surface gauge here, our compar comparative tool. I've got a tense indicator set up, and to speed this up, I've already got this set on zero. You have a fine adjust screw on the back of this, the surface gauge there, so that you can adjust the height of your dial because you want to get it in on, on zero. So we're going to go ahead and just push this under there gently. And we're just about lined up on zero. This is, it's really fussy trying to get a uh, tense indicator set to zero, but we've got it about there and we're just sweeping that underneath there. And you can, you can see by sweeping it that that is flat and parallel, which is what a gauge block is supposed to be. I'm gonna get you guys set up a little bit closer so y'all can see this a little bit better. Okay, I think you guys can probably see this a little bit better. We're gonna go ahead and, and uh, re-sweep. I shouldn't have done that, but we're gonna go ahead and re-sweep our stack up right here of our gauge blocks. Remember our gauge block stack up equals 1.9971, and you just get an indicator of your choice set up and get it set to a zero. And you can see the dial is right there about on zero. Again, this is a reference, okay? So we're not actually doing this for a job. I'm just give, giving you an example. So if we have some deviation there, I apologize. So that is our standard right there. That's what we're using our gauge block for. This is the size that we wanna machine our blocks to or machine our part to, okay? So now we have our parts that, that we have ground. And let's come in here and see if this is on the size that we landed on. So you can see the dial indicator is minus one line. Actually, it's just over that. So, well, let's just round it up and call it one tenth. All right, there's one tenth difference. Now, if we're inspecting this job to see if this is gonna pass uh, quality control and go on to use or a customer if you're selling it, there's your tolerance. You have plus one and minus one, which actually I'm gonna say we fall within our tolerance of minus one on this one right there. A lot of times when you buy uh, one, two, three blocks, they give you a tolerance of plus or minus two tenths, which is, that's why I put that down there. All right, so there's that guy right there. 
Now you can do further checks with this to see if it's flat and parallel and that kind of stuff, but we're gonna do that another time. All we wanna do is just this quick reference here to see if our blocks are actually within the spec that we give ourselves. Get it settled out. All right, there you go. There is a minus one tenth on that block there as well. Again, we're not going to worry about sweeping it or, or seeing how flat and parallel we are. Uh, we just want to do a reference to see if our blocks are actually within our tolerance there that we give ourselves. So there we go. I would say both of these are within the tolerance that we wrote down, and these are going to be good to go. All set with our gauge blocks right there for our comparative measurement. So there we go. There's just one example of how you can use your gauge blocks there or how we would use the gauge blocks in the shop. They have many uses, both in the inspection room, on the granite plate, out there in the shop for uh, different jobs. Uh, that's how I use them a lot of times, but I wanted to show you a, uh, a really precision way to inspect parts here, uh, our example of our one through three blocks of making your stack up and using your stack up as your master reference with an indicator set up on, okay? So the other thing that you can do with your, your gauge blocks there is use your qualified and certified gauge blocks to use to uh, certify all of your measurement tools. And that's what a lot of companies do. There's, there's companies out there that you would hire. They come in, they have their own certified gauge blocks and, uh, you know, qualified and certified that they come in and then they use those against your measurement tools and they'll have to calibrate them sometimes if you make a slight adjustment on a micrometer or any measurement tool. And then after they get it adjusted, if need to, then they re-qualify, re they recertify your measurement tools. That's why a lot of times, uh, like when you buy a tool secondhand, you'll see a little tag or a sticker on there that gives you like an expiration date on when they need to be recertified. That's what that is. They have to certify the tools because you have to have accountability. That's one of the problems. I won't say it's a problem. That's one of the facts in manufacturing is when you're, when you're building a part, it has to be within spec. And if it's not within spec, you have to find out why is it not within spec? You keep going down the line and then you might find out that your, your measurement tools were not in spec. They weren't qualified. They're out of spec. They need to be recertified. Or maybe your gauge block itself has got so much wear that it's no longer within tolerance. So that's why you have to do annual uh, QC checks on all your measurement tools and why it's very important in industry that they are qualified. But for another example, if you wanted to uh, qualify and certify your, let's just say these digital calipers here, all right, we're going to use our, let's use our one, our one inch uh, gauge block here and see how our calipers measure up to it, okay? There you go. I'm not putting uh, very much pressure on that at all. Don't want to squeeze it, but that is on one inch. So we're just going to pretend a company is in here and they are qualifying and calibrating my tools. They're going to measure that against their, their gauge block. They're going to see that it's good. And then so they're going to put a uh, certification sticker on this tool somewhere, a lot of times on the back there, saying that that's within spec. And then you have, uh, usually it's an annual um, it's an annual reinspection that you have to do and they'll, and they'll check it again and, and requalify it or calibrate it if it needs to. A lot of times you make a little adjustment on your, uh, mics to, uh, get those within spec. All right. So there we go. I think that's going to finish up this video and I'm going to go ahead and put these guys back in the, the box here. I just want to mention, always handle these tools with care, be gentle, uh, don't slam them. Don't throw them down. Just be very careful with them and put them back in their case. And then there's our one zero zero one right there. All right. So I look forward to uh, bringing you guys back and let's show in some more of the work that we can do using our new steric gauge blocks.